Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to look at performing computations and other bases. So remember that normally um, our numbers are written in base 10, but if we're looking at a base 2 or binary system, the only digits that are used are zeros and ones, right? So let's say we want to add two numbers together um, and they're in base 2. We have to remember that when we write our answer that we can only use the digits 0 and 1. So if we make a quick um, table, you can see here that um, since I can only add the digits 0 and 1, right, 0 plus 0 would give me 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 and 0 is 1, but then 1 and 1, how are we getting 10? So remember that if you add 1 plus 1, you get 2, but that's in base 10. Okay, we want to write our answer in base 2. So I have to figure out how many times can I divide 2 into 2. And as we all know, 2 goes into itself one time with the remainder of 0. So the 1 there represents the number of groups. And the 0 represents the leftover of the remainder. Okay, so if you put this together, 1, 0, you get 10. Um, and you can make um, addition tables for any of the bases. So if we had base 5, for instance, I provided the table here. Um, notice when you add 0 to the top row, it just gives you those numbers, right? Um, the same thing with this column here, because it's 0 plus these numbers, just give you the numbers back again. Um, and then if I add the others, so if I was to do... 1 plus 1, I get 2. 1 plus 2 gives me 3. 1 plus 3 gives me 4. And then you notice when we get to um, 1 plus 4, it's a 10. And that's because 1 plus 4 is 5. And since it's base 5, we can only use the digits 0 through 4. So 5 goes into itself one time, remainder 0. So that's where the 10 comes from. And you can see here when we do 2 plus 4, you get 6, right? But there's not a 6 there. That's because 5 goes into 6 one time with the remainder of 1. Um, 3 plus 4 is 7, and 5 goes into 7 one time, remainder 2. So that's where those numbers are coming from. So if you need to make a quick um, table for the bases, please feel free to do that. Um, it might help you when you're solving problems. So let's say we want to add two numbers that are base 5, since the table's already there. If I want to add 34 base 5 plus 23 base 5, so using the table, if I was to take the units column, the 3 and the 4, and add, right, 3 plus 4, if you're in base 5, would give you 12. So I'm going to put down the 2 and carry the 1. And then I would have 3 plus 2, which gives me 10, if you're in base 5. 10 plus 1 more would give you 11. So this is 112, and then we put a little 5 subscript to show it's 112 base 5. Okay, moving over to number 2, we're going to do the same thing. So we've got 4 plus 1, and according to our chart, gives us 10. So I'm going to put down the 0 and carry the 1. In the 10s column, I have 1 plus 1 plus 1. Right, so 1 plus 1 I know is 2, plus 1 more would give me 3. Okay, then I've got 2 plus 0, which gives me 2. And then I have 3 plus 2, which according to my chart would give me 10 again. Notice that the answer um, uses the digits 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, if you're in base 5, you can never have digits um, greater than 4, right? It has to be 4 or less. So we always want to check that. Okay, and then we would also put our little subscript to show that that is um, base 5. Subtraction is carried out pretty much the same way we subtract with base 10. Um, the only thing you want to remember is when you're borrowing, you need to borrow the amount of the base given in the subtraction problem. So, for example, if we stick to base 5, if I need to borrow um, from one of the other uh, places, 
I would need to borrow five instead of just borrowing um, 10, right? Because that's usually what we do. So if I want to subtract, let's say 3,032 base five minus 1,004 base five. Um, I'm going to start over here in the ones column and we know we can't subtract two minus four. So I would have to borrow from the tens column, right? So normally you would borrow 10 and the two would become a 12, right? Um, so instead of borrowing 10, I'm going to borrow five. So I'm going to add five more onto that. Um, so two plus five would give me seven and then seven minus four would give me three. So this turns into a three. Okay. Um, and this next number now, uh, we've got two, right? Two minus zero gives me two. Zero minus zero is zero. And then three minus one is two. So it's 2023. And then the little subscript five for base five. In number two, uh, remember we have a base that's bigger than 10. So we're gonna see these letters here. And um, I want you to recall that um, A is 10 and B would be 11, C is 12 and so on. So here what I have here is 10 minus eight, right? Which we know is just two, so that's easy. But now we've got seven minus 11 and you can't do that, right? So I have to borrow. And this time I'm borrowing 12 from that column. So 12 plus seven would make this into a 19. And then 19 minus 11, we know is eight, right? And then this just became an eight and eight minus four is four. So it's 482 base 12. Um, here's some for you all to try. So you could try these on your own. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask in class. But you can pause the video and try these on your own um, and see how you do. And I will provide you the answers so you can um, check them. So for number one, you should get 11 base 3. Number two should be 1450 base 7. Um, three will give you BA. 0, 3, base 12, and then number 4 um, is going to give you, and this one might throw you off a little bit, um, this one's going to give you 35E16. Okay, again, try them, and if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask, and we can go over it. Okay, let's look at multiplication next. So we know um, when we're working in base 10, which is what we're used to, if you were trying to solve four times three, that just means there's four groups of three units, right? So visually it looks something like this. Um, and we also know that the product or the answer would be 12. So it's very similar in base five. Um, it, there's four groups of three units, right? Um, but this time, since we're in base five, we can only use the digits zero through four, right? So here's one way you could do this without actually making a table. Um, you can pretend that you're first multiplying four times three in base 10. So we know that gives you a 12, okay? But I need to turn this into some number with a base of five. So what I'm gonna do is just take five and 12 and I'm gonna divide them. And I know five can go into 12 two times two times five is 10, and then the remainder is two, right? So this is really, if I put these two together, two units with two, it's two groups of five with two units remaining, so it's 22, okay? And that is what four base five times three base five is. It's 22 base five. So you can always pretend you're in base 10 and then convert if you need to. We're gonna do something similar when we're multiplying these here. So we've got 13 base five times three base five. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to start here at the 
um, units and multiply units times units. So 3 base 5 times 3 base 5. Okay, so if you want to, pretend you're just using uh, base 10. So 3 times 3, which is 9, right? But if you're in base 5, you can only use the digits 0 through 4. So this is base 10. I need to convert this to base 5. So 5 goes into 9 one time with the remainder of 4, right? So that would just be 14 base 5. So I'm going to put the 4, and I'm going to slide this down so I have some room. I'm going to put the 4 here, and I'm going to carry the 1. Okay, so now I just have 3 times 1 plus 1. And 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Okay, and that's already in base 5. So that's just going to be 44. And then don't forget the little subscript base 5. Um, and the reason I didn't have to do anything to this is because 5 can't go into um, 4, right? So basically, if you think of it like this, 4 base 10 just converts to 4 base 5 because 5 can't go into 4. So that stays the same. Um, in the second one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply 5 times 3 and then 5 times 4. So 5 times 3 gives us 15. That's in base 10, right? So now I have to turn it into base 7. 7 goes into 15 2 times. 2 times 7 is 14. And then 15 minus 14 is 1. So it's 21 and then base 7. So I'm going to put down the 1. I'm going to carry the 2. Now I have 5 times 4 plus 2, and that just gives me 22, right? And that's base 10. So 7 goes into 22 three times with the remainder of 1. So I'm just going to write down the 31. Okay, now we know that we leave a little space, right? We're going to slide down, and we're going to multiply 2 times 3 and then 2 times 4. So... 2 times 3 gives me 6, and 7 cannot go into 6, right? So 6 base 10 is the same thing as 6 base 7. So that's going to be a 6. And then I'm going to do 2 times 4, which gives me 8. And I need to take 7 and divide that into 8. You get 1, remainder 1. So that's just 11 base 7. Okay, and I'm just going to write down the 11, and then we're going to add. So 1 plus, there's an invisible 0 here, gives me 1. Now when you're adding here, 1 plus 6, you get 7. Okay, you're not allowed to get 7, though, because if you have a base 7, remember, you can only use the digits 0 through 6. Okay, so let's make a little note of that. Base 7 means use only digits 0 to 6, okay? So if I add 1 and 6, I get 7. I'm not allowed to use 7. Remember, 7 in base 10 would turn into a 10 in base 7, right? Because 7 goes into itself one time with the remainder of 0. So this is going to turn into a 10. So I'm going to put a 0 there, and I'm going to carry the 1. So now you have 1 plus 3 plus 1. And that's just going to give me a 5 and a 1. And then don't forget, it's base 7. So your final answer is 1,501 base 7. Okay, division is performed pretty much the same way um, as long division in base 10. Um, and remember that you can check your answer um, by taking the quotient or the answer to a division problem and multiplying it by the divisor, which is the number on the outside that you're dividing by, and then add the remainder, and it should equal the dividend, and the dividend is what's inside here, okay? So one way you can do this is you can, if you would like, you can make a, a multiplication table for base 5, Okay, so let me show you how to construct one of them. 
um, but you don't need to. So base five means I can only use the digits zero through four. So I'm gonna write the number zero through four vertically and then zero through four horizontally and I'm multiplying. Okay, I'm gonna make a little chart like this. We call this a base five multiplication table. If I multiply zero times this whole top row, it's just gonna give you zeros. Um, likewise, if I multiply um, all of these numbers by zero, you're gonna get zeros in that first column because zero times zero is zeros, one times zero is zero, and so on. Okay, one times all of these numbers will just give you those numbers back again, the identity. Now when I multiply two times one, I get two. Two times two gives me four. But now when I multiply two times three, I get six. I'm not allowed to put a six there because base five means you can only use the digit zero through four. So I have to change it, right? So I'm just gonna divide, right? Two times three gives me six. So take the base, five. Five goes into six one time with the remainder of one. So that's just an 11. Okay, for the next one, I've got two times four, which is eight. Five goes into eight one time with the remainder of three. So that's just gonna be 13. Okay, in the next row, three times one is three. Three times two is six. Remember, a six turned into an 11. Three times three is nine. Five goes into nine one time with the remainder of four. Three times four is 12. Five goes into 12 two times with the remainder of two. So that's gonna turn into a 22. Four times one is four. Four times two is eight. Remember that turns into a 13. Remember, four times two is the same thing as two times four. So you already have the answer here. Two times four in base five is 13, base five. So that should be a 13. Four times three is gonna give us the same thing we got for three times four. Three times four is 22. So we should have a 22 there. And four times four is 16. And five goes into 16. Um, three times with the remainder of one. So that's a 31. Okay, so now I want to use this table to divide, okay? And I'm going to kind of do my work. Um, let me slide this over here and I'll do my work right where the problem is. So the first thing I want to do is go to this row, which would be here. And you want to figure out, okay, which of those factors when I multiply it by two gives me a one. Well, I don't have anything there that would come close to a one. So then I go to a 14. And if I do two times four, it gives me 13. So that's enough to get me close enough to 14. So two times four gives me 13, right? In base five, two base five times four base five is 13 base five. So I'm gonna put this four right here above that four, okay? And then I'm gonna multiply. And remember, when you multiply, it's four base five times two base five, which is not eight, it's 13 base five. So you're just gonna put that number right there, 13, and we subtract. 14 minus 13 gives you one, okay? Then I'm going to bring down the three. And again, how many groups of two base five will give you 13? Four, exactly four. So four base five times two base five gives you 13. And then when we subtract, we get zero. So our quotient, and remember we wanna put a little subscript five, our quotient would be 44 base five, and our remainder is zero base five. Okay, let's try another one. So here we have um, base six, okay? So let's practice, we can make a table here. We've got um, base six means you can only use the digits zero through five. Okay, we're multiplying. Um, and 
I'm gonna make my little chart like this. Okay, and we know that zero times all these top numbers is just gonna give you a zero. And you can fill in zeros here as well because each of these numbers times zero just gives you zero. One times all of those numbers will just give you those numbers back again, the identity. Okay, but here's where we're gonna to have to start playing around with our, our numbers. So two times one gives me two, that'll be okay. Two times two would be four, that's gonna be okay. But when I do two times three, it gives me six. Remember, you can't have um, anything higher than a five. When you have base six, you can only use the digit zero through five. So if it's not in this column or this row, you can't use it. And when I do two times three, it gives me six. Six is not in my list here. So I have to convert it, right? So how many times can six divide into six? One time, remainder zero. So that's gonna turn into a 10 right there, okay? Same thing with two times four gives me eight. I can't have eight. It can only, the highest number I can get is five. So six goes into eight one time with the remainder of two. Two times five is 10. Six goes into 10 one time, remainder four. So that turns into a 14. Okay, two times one, two times two, and so on. Then I've got three times one, okay, three times two, six. Remember, six turned into 10. Three times three is nine. Six goes into nine one time, remainder three. So that's a 13. Three times four is 12. Six goes into 12. Two times, remainder zero. Three times five is 15. Six goes into 15. Two times, remainder three. Four times one. Four times two is eight. Remember, eight turned into 12. It's the same thing as um, two times four. Okay, four times three will be the same thing as three times four, which was 20. 4 times 4 is 16, and we know that 6 goes into 16 2 times, remainder 4. Okay, um, 4 times 5 is 20, 6 goes into 20 3 times, remainder 2. And then I've got 5 times 1. 5 times 2 is 10. 6 goes into 10 one time, remainder 4. 5 times 3 is 15. 6 goes into 15 two times, remainder 3. 5 times 4 is 20. 6 goes into 20 three times, remainder 2. And then 5 times 5 is 25, and 6 goes into 25 four times, remainder 1. Okay. So now I'm looking at five base six. So I wanna concentrate on this row here. And first I wanna start off, can this go into okay, three? Well, in this well, next part of the video, we're gonna look at polynomial there. functions so I would slide and we're gonna find the zeros and state the multiplicity and determine if the graph so right will cross here, or touch the at each zero. Four, and then also look at the five end behavior. Times four so in this first problem here, we have this polynomial Okay, and so five um, I want to find the zeros, which remember just is the x-intercepts. So I'm going to take so my gonna expression and just okay, so set it equal to zero and slide it down. Okay, so and remember that we're going to apply the zero product property, which just means take each of the and factors and set it equal to zero. I don't have to worry about setting one tenth equal to zero because it doesn't, right? So we're just going to take... And x minus 2 minus to the third two is two. and make it equal 0. Bring down the one. 2x okay, so minus 1 equals 0. Row again, can I come and x plus 2 21. squared equals 0. Okay. And the my exponents tell me my multiplicity. So here we know we're going to have a repeated root of 3. It's so going to be a multiplicity of 3. That just means that uh, when you solve this and set it equal 14. to 0, okay. So this two, it I'm has put right three above answers one, that are the same. So if you solve for x five, here, you're going to get two. Which give me 14, but because of the three, there's I'm really three twos. Now so subtract, x equals two seven. has a multiplicity six, you can't have of any digits two, higher than of five, three. Right? 
So we have to convert the seven. And then 2x so minus 1, if I solve seven, that for x, I get 1 half. Times and that multiplicity is just 1. With a remainder and of And then x plus 2, one. if I set that equal to 0 and solve for x, I get negative 2. Okay, and that so multiplicity keep that seven is there, right? 2. Okay, and again, so the multiplicity I'm going comes to from borrow the exponent. From here. So I'm borrowing, okay, so now, remember, since I'm the in base 6, I'm borrowing 6 multiplicity also tells me whether the column. graph so one plus will six, cross that's or touch the x-axis at that point. So remember, if the multiplicity so is odd, six there, so it's going to cross the x-axis at that okay, point. And when I so from that column, the two odd multiplicities into, would be um, uh, this oh, here, because so, like it's said, 3, 3 is odd, seven minus and four, this here, because... Um, um, gives it's us, got a multiplicity of uh, one, three. one is odd. So it's going to and then cross the x-axis there. Zero on the other side. So here okay, it's going so to cross now I have to remember to pull at x equals two. Okay, and here and it's going to cross five times what number would at x equals one half. And you'll see that in um, the graph. Without going over, it and would then be three. even multiplicity okay, means that the graph is just going to touch the x-axis at that point. So it's going to... Touch so I'm going to use the graph here. at x equals okay. um, negative two. That's going to be so you're going to see here, and again, you're if I pull up the graph, column, so you're basically adding six. You can see Zero here six how six. it's crossing minus three is at three, one and half and at two, two because those two both had an zero. odd multiplicity. So you've got your and it's touching the x-axis at x equals negative two. So it's kind of hitting the the negative two, and then it's bouncing off. And, and this is going to be useful when you're graphing polynomial functions. Okay, in addition to finding the end behavior. So that's the, the next thing I need um, to I do. Have some more so here I found practice. the answer. The more my my these, zeros um, were 2, 1 half, get. and I will give negative the 2. For, um, and then them, it crosses. So. Um, this way you can check and um, questions and you can touches ask. at certain points. This one's going to be and then letter C is the end behavior. Zero. So for the end behavior, remember uh, I need to know two things. I need to know the leading and coefficient. Number two, if it's, the answer is going to um, be um, positive or negative, one zero, and the degree one seven, if it's even or odd. So my eight, leading coefficient here, right? Number I would three, have a one tenth x and one then a two x and an x. So if you multiply them. You would get Base two tenths, four. and then and it would be x to the sixth to be power because you have an x cubed, um, an x to the first, um, so and by an the x way, squared. The 123 so if I add those, I get zero. x to the sixth. And so four, my degree quotient. is six, which is Comes even, and my lead coefficient here, it's positive, right? We and said positive two tenths. Um, um, comes out to be one. So base seven. when it is positive okay, so those, see how you and do. even, remember you that questions. it's going to um, I'm happy point to upwards over it with you all. on both sides. Okay, so think of x squared, video. right? It's positive and even, and it's a parabola that's concave up. So it's pointing up. So when I write my end behavior, I'm going to express it like this. I'm going to talk about the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x. So that just means on the x-axis, so if we look at the graph, if we were to go towards positive infinity on the x-axis, what is the graph doing on that end? Well, on the right side, it's pointing up. So f of x is always going to approach positive infinity. So this is going to equal positive infinity. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity just means as you are walking along the x-axis towards negative infinity, again, if you look at the graph, what's happening to the graph, it's always increasing towards positive infinity forever. So the limit here is going to also equal positive infinity. Anytime you have, um, you're talking about end behavior and it's positive and even or negative and even, you're going to get the same answer for both limits. Okay, because remember, both sides are going to be going in the same direction. It's when you have odd powers that it's going to go opposite. So you'll get two opposite answers. One will be positive infinity, the other will be negative infinity. Okay, let's try one more. So here we have f of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. So the first thing I need to do is find the zeros. So I'm just going to set this equal to 0. Okay, and this is not factored for me like letter A was. So I'm going to go ahead and factor it. And here we can factor out an x, and you're left with x squared minus x minus 2. 
And then I can also factor the inside here. So two numbers that multiply to give you negative two that add to negative one, and we get x minus two times x plus one. Okay, and I'm gonna set each of these factors equal to zero. And here, as you can see, we don't have any um, powers other than one. So for each of those, it has a multiplicity of one. One is odd, so that means it's gonna cross. So it's going to cross at x equals 1, it's going to cross at x equals 2, and it's going to cross at x equals negative 1. So here are your um, zeros, and it's going to cross in each place. So if we were to actually graph that, you'll see, so if I plug in here, I have my x cubed, um, minus x squared, minus 2x. You can see at each of those zeros or x-intercepts, the graph goes right through and crosses. Um, also take a look at the end behavior. It is going in opposite directions, right? And that makes sense because our degree is a three, it's odd. So when we're looking at end behavior, My lead coefficient here would be one, so that's positive one. And my degree is three, which is odd. So remember, positive and odd, the right side's gonna go up, the left side's gonna go down. They're gonna go in opposite directions. So here, if you go to the right on the graph, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x is also gonna approach positive infinity. It's gonna point up. And as x approaches negative infinity, as you go left on the graph, that's negative infinity. Let me make that more clear. Um, f of x is going to approach negative infinity, so they're opposite for that one. Okay, and you all can try the next problem on your own um, if you take a look at those examples from above. And in this last problem here, we have um, a function, okay? And um, again, you can try this on your own, um, looking at the examples from above. So you wanna talk about how many turning points does this have? Um, you wanna find the y-intercept algebraically. We talked about all of that in the last chapter and before. Um, find the zeros or the x-intercepts and their multiplicity, and then discuss the end behavior as well. Okay, and the only other thing I want to point out to you are what power functions are. Um, there are functions of degree n, and they're in monomial form. So mono means one, right? It's one polynomial. Okay, it's going to resemble something like this. So if you had like x squared, that's called a polyno That's called a power function. Um, negative five x cubed, one half x to the sixth. Okay, and what's important to remember is that polynomials resemble a power function when you have large values of the absolute value of x, um, specifically with n behavior. So x squared, I know it's positive and even, so the graph, remember, is going to go up on both sides. So if I was to take x squared, a power function, and let's say add on to it, like something like this. If you graph that equation, it's going to resemble the power function. So it, even though it will look slightly different, it'll go through the x-axis in different places, it's going to contain the same end behavior. It's going to uh, approach positive infinity um, as x approaches positive or negative infinity. Okay, just like this one is negative lead coefficient, and it's odd. So remember, negative and odd, it's going to point up to the left and down to the right. Okay, so even if I created another equation using that power function, like something like this, it's going to contain the same end behavior. Okay, that's it for uh, this lesson. Um, please feel free if you need to go back and review to do that. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me.